Hello everybody, Max here again and today I have a video that I'm pretty sure no one has done yet. I'm going to be making a Tokyo nightclub tier list. Well, I'm not going to go through all the clubs in Tokyo, but I'm going to go through the main ones I've actually been to. I've gone ahead and written down all my notes on two pages of Microsoft Word. So this is going to be an actual planned video for once. So you will enjoy it hopefully. I've also, if you haven't noticed, figured out how to use autofocus on my camera. So as a 60,000 sub plus YouTuber, I finally figured out autofocus. So a little bit of backstory. I used to go to the clubs a lot when I was at Sophia University. That's what, I, what all the international kids would do. So I was going maybe sometimes twice a week spending all my money. It was a terrible decision. Don't do it. But now that I have this information, I can share it to you guys so that if you are visiting Japan or if you are a student, you will know now which clubs to pick over the other ones. And briefly, just before I start, I do want to mention that I have been to a lot of American USA clubs and in comparison, overall in general, clubbing in Tokyo has been a lot more enjoyable and fun for me than clubbing in America and this is basically because I feel like in Japan people judge you a lot way less you don't have to be cool you can just dance the night away have fun and in America I feel like a lot of times you have to kind of look more cool when you're there so all around Japanese vibe Japanese clubs is better so I did want to just at least mention that before getting into this because maybe that sets the tone for what I'm about to tell you so let's get started the first clubs I'm going to be talking about are in Roppongi and Roppongi is very known for being a club area in Japan for a lot of international western foreign people coming into Japan or maybe who, who actually live there. So I am going to start it off with A-Life. A-Life, if I had to choose to go to a club today, I would probably actually choose this club over almost any other club. Uh, it's currently definitely one of the top places in my opinion. Prices are on like an average price of about 4,000 yen entry if you're a guy, maybe like 3,000 yen entry if you're a girl. Uh, that's just typical in Japanese clubs. The women usually get in for cheaper, even though it could be considered sexism, but I'm not going to get into that. It's cheaper because, hey, we need to get the girls in. I understand it. Many people who go here do speak Japanese and English, so the actual clientele customers you go will be like that international Japanese vibe, which is really cool for people like me and my friends. There's three floors. The bottom floor mostly plays like the top club hits and things like that. And that's the biggest dance floor area. This is kind of like the one of the places I would take my friends if they ever visited from the US to go here because the vibe is great. The music is good. The lights that they have in the bottom floor that play when the music plays, I think they do a really good job with that. You can really just kind of hang out with other people in the area. They'll just like hype you up. And that vibe is nice. They also have some very hot go-go dancers every now and then, I think on the weekends, almost every weekend, dancing on stage, kind of hyping up the crowd. And that's just all fun. It, it's all around a very fun club and a lot of fun people, in my opinion, go there. I did read on Google reviews that people really didn't like the bouncers, but I never had a problem with the bouncers. So A-Life, very solid club. Beginning of the list, I give it an S. So it's an S tier club. Next club is One Oak. One Oak is actually quite similar to A-Life in my opinion. Uh, they play a variety of songs. You'll get the same type of people that would go to A-Life at One Oak. I do generally find maybe it's a little bit on the younger side than A-Life, because A-Life maybe it's like anywhere from the 20s to early 30s, and One Oak seems like maybe early 20s, mid 20s type of range. And there's also only one dance floor at One Oak, so there's a little bit less of a stylish vibe at One Oak than compared to A-Life. And I think I mentioned A-Life has three floors and it's like hip hop, uh, party music on the bottom, and then the main floor has like house music. Uh, but One Oak still is a very solid club, has the international Japanese bilingual type of crowd. Uh, definitely not bad, but it's not quite like a life tier. So I'm going to knock it down to an A tier. V2, Vanity 2 and Via Tokyo. So I'm actually not really sure <laughs> what happened here. I think it's two clubs now that used to be in one because back when I was partying here it was called Feria and Feria was like one of the best clubs because it had four floors of dance floors. The very top floor was also like a rooftop area where you could just chill out and hang out if you're too hot from dancing. There's like 
a red carpet area and things like that. So anyway, Feria, for those of them who, who remember Feria, that was a great club. But anyways, going back to the actual thing right now, which is V2. So V2, I think they kind of like cut it in half. So I have, haven't been to Via Tokyo, which I believe is like the rooftop section. I've only been to V2, which is the first floor and the bottom section. So V2, long story short, they play a variety of things, hip hop, dance, house, everything like that. They did keep the red carpet style entryway, which is kind of cool. Uh, the prices are about the same as A-Life, which is about 4,000 yen entry. Um, honestly, from what I remember, the vibe is kind of similar to One Oak. There aren't multiple dance floors like A-Life, but it's a good club with a decent amount of Japanese people and gaijin. I think there's more like gaijin that don't speak Japanese that go here and maybe Japanese people that don't speak as much English that go here, but it's still a very good club, but it doesn't really stand out above A-Life and One Oak, so I'm actually gonna give this a B tier. And I just thought about this, but if this tier list makes it so that people at these clubs actually recognize who I am, which I hope it doesn't, just know I'm willing to do a sponsorship and maybe you can change my mind on some of these things. So, you know, we can ra raise your rank or something. I I I'm going to go on. Next up, we have El Tokyo. El Tokyo is also located near this area. It's I think it's actually Azabu Juban, which is right next to Roppongi. And the thing is, I've only actually been here once from what I remember. Uh, and I remember having a pretty good vibe. Uh, at the entryway, there's a drag queen who enter entered us in and it was, you know, bilingual drag queen, spoke Japanese English. That was pretty cool. So I remember for the most part, it did have that international Japanese, like bilingual crowd type of group going there. But I honestly just can't remember exactly my experience. I might have been drinking too much juice, but I'm pretty sure it was okay. So. It, this is a kind of odd place, but I'm gonna put it in between A and B because I honestly just can't remember. Muse is the next club we're gonna talk about. This is definitely different from all the other clubs I talked about because this is more like the upper 20s, early 30s type crowd. Usually all the men who go here wear suits and I'm pretty sure it's almost like the men will finish work go out to eat with all the other guys at the office and then they're like, hey, what do we wanna do after this? Let's go to Muse because I think women get in for like free at this place or at least very cheap. You don't have to wait if you're a woman. It's actually very like, uh, they motivate women to come to this club because the, the guys too, I think they used to make the men show like their business card to actually get in. So you couldn't get in if you weren't like a working salary man, which I think, you know, they're trying to link you know, more of the mature with money guys with women who want those type of guys. And from what I remember though, it's not like a place for gold diggers. It's not like that at all, but there's not really a lot of foreigners. It's mostly Japanese. Not to say that foreigners aren't welcome. I, I know, you know, me and my friends who are, a lot of them, you know, are foreign looking, have gotten in and they've been hit on or hit on girls and it worked out for them. So it's actually a pretty fun place. The vibe is really chill. They have two floors. The floor below has kind of a seating area with like, you know, the, the chair bench things on the chains to swing on and like other tables and areas where two people specifically designed for two people to sit and relax after dancing. So they definitely set it up so that's very easy to kind of like talk to a girl or talk to a guy if you're there. So in any case, it's definitely on the mature side. The dancing is not so wild, maybe like the other places where it's like super hype. Uh, this is a lot more that mature vibe. I mean there there are some hype moments the music does have like the more clubby aspect You know dance music, so uh, I'm not saying that it's like quiet and boring It's actually pretty fun, but it's not really my type of club uh, I will say that most of the people there are definitely on the attractive side like Japanese attractive side so I think that's why it's mostly just Japanese guys and girls, but not really my type of thing, so maybe to you, you might give it an A, but I'm gonna have to just give it a solid B. Next up, we have R2, and this place is so ass that I hate this place so much. Like, I've only been here maybe two times at night. It sucked because, like, the whole vibe really just gives off this, this smell of thirst. It, it's like a moist, moist room of thirst for gaijin hunters, which is like 
women who are looking for gaijin and then gaijin men who are looking for those gaijin hunter type women and it's mostly like older people too so they're in their 40s and i understand like 40 year old people need to have their time and need their love but it's i'm not in that range and i i i felt very uncomfortable when i was there with the amount of thirst that was going on uh it's basically like a bar area and actually during the day it is a supper club and I will say that the food that they serve is not that bad. It's actually pretty good. They have chicken wings and you can get it during lunchtime for a pretty good deal. But then at nighttime, it's actually located right across from V2. I don't know if it's owned by the same owners, but anyway, it's R2. And at nighttime, it's actually free entry, which is not bad because you can go in and get the music and get the get the drinks get the food use the bathroom <laughs> if you want to use the bathroom but i just man I, the the overall thirstiness of that place and like the age it just seeing like really older people like doing like this clubby flirty like trying to make out with people it's it just it, overall it's just i didn't like it I give this place a hard F for the terrible experiences I have. I do give the chicken wings a good grade, possibly an A, but that doesn't help the club itself. <laughs> I really just, if you can't tell, I didn't like that place at all. All right, so that was all the Roppongi places I'm gonna go over. Next, I will go to Shibuya, but right before I get into Shibuya, I have to give Ageha its credit. Ageha, if you don't know, is I think the biggest club in Asia at least the biggest club in Japan. It's huge, it's like almost like a convention center. They have foam parties, they have bikini night, they have uh, a food court where you can get curry and kebabs, just like off in a different section, because it's literally like a convention. There's like four or five different dance areas. The, the main dance stage is literally like where they hold concerts and stuff like that, so it's huge. And the ceiling is like, I don't even know, like a hundred feet tall. It's super high up. Their area, you can get lost in this area. Like you can definitely lose people if you're here. Uh, other things to mention, I remember the last time I went, there's girls on roller skate with bunny ears giving away free cigarettes and free popcorn. So, it's just, and they also have like light up things are on them. And you know, the fact that they're just roller skating around the club area is very, very Japanese like club type of thing and I think that's something very cool about it. There is also a free shuttle bus that goes from Shibuya to Ageha which is located in Shinkiba. I forgot to mention that. It's pretty far if you take it on the train but if you take the bus it's free. You can kind of party on the bus and then just go there and then in the morning when you want to go back you can take it back to Shibuya. So it's it, it's very, they run it very well. I, I think the entry fee is like the same ish price around 4,000 yen. However, I know it's a little bit more strict to get in here. You usually have to bring like a passport or you know some form of ID that has your face on that is recognized in Japan. So it can't be like an American driver's license. It has to be something more official than that. Also, there is like a pool, a mini pool. There are go-go dancers and they have like a very great view outside because there's an outside area as well. It, it, you should definitely go if you come to Japan. I give Ageha a pretty solid S tier because I wouldn't go out there that often because it's so far away, but it's one of those places where if you can plan on, man, there, there's so many things, just the foam parties, the bikini nights, the Cyber Japan girls is this whole group of girls that do go-go dancing and they're usually over there every now and then. So you should look it up more and uh, definitely check it out yourself. All right, now I'm gonna take it straight back to Shibuya and talk about Gas Panic, which is also straight up ass club terrible. It's useful as a club maybe if you want a pre-game there because there is actually free entry at this club, but it's just, there's this area where you, on Shibuya, where you can walk downstairs into this place called Gas Panic. It's very cramped, it's dirty, people are just trying to hook up here. 
this is the place you would go if you actually didn't have plans to go clubbing and you just ended up there anyway. Like I said, there's no entry fee, but they do force you to have a drink in your hand because that's kind of like your entry fee is just buying a drink. And if you don't have a drink, the bouncers were like, come chase you down and trying to lighten your face because they're like, hey, buy a drink. So anyway, it's terrible. I mean, they named it Gas Panic, which is a panic gas backwards. How, how bad do you think this could be? Like panic gas, what kills people. So long story short, I actually know they already shut it down recently. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. However, I feel like it could make a comeback just for the people who really wanted to, but I hope it does not. I give this a solid F. Next up is Camelot. This is a club that's been around for years. Uh, the size of the place is not actually that bad. There's like two floors. There's a good mix of Japanese and foreign people. Uh, I would say maybe I feel like it's less of the bilingual foreign people, but I mean, you still would get that crowd, but it's, it feels more like when, you know, tourists are here, it feels like the foreign tourists choose to go to Camelot often. And then the Japanese people that go there either aren't interested in talking to international or the foreign people or uh, maybe they are, but I feel like they would rather go to R2 <laughs> if they're looking for foreigners like that. Now, it could just be in my experiences, but the floors there are known for being very sticky. I don't know what it is. Those floors, when you're there, they just stick to your shoe and it doesn't give off the cleanest vibe. So that's not good. Uh, I will say the music is decent. They play mostly club hits, hip hop, and it is decent if you get in there before 11 p.m. because it's only a thousand yen entry. I think after 11 p.m. it's like 3,000 or 3,500 if you're a guy. And I think they give you some drink tickets, which is basically what you're paying for with your entry fee. So I would give this place a D tier just for like how clean the cleanliness factor and the funness factor, but because of the price, you know, if you can get in before 11 for a thousand yen and then maybe use it as like a pregame place before you go to another place, it's actually not that terrible. I'm gonna bump it up to a C tier. All right, next up is Jumanji and there's actually two Jumanjis. There's one in Shibuya and one in Roppongi. And I will tell you this place completely lives up to his name, Jumanji, because once you enter into Jumanji, you can't get out of Jumanji. <laughs> But I've been in Jumanji. It's like it's like a terrible place where you can't leave. And I, I just say that because it feels like uh, the movie. Like when you go in, or actually even before you go in, outside they have a statue of Predator, or maybe it's Alien. I think in Shibuya they have a statue of Alien, like from the movie. And in Roppongi they have a statue of Predator for some reason. <laughs> and when you enter the club, they have like dinosaur heads on the wall. And when, like before you actually get into the, the main stage, there's only one floor. And the one in Shibuya has a whole bunch of alien statues, maybe five or six alien statues, and they all have boobs on them, like human female boobs on alien, just sitting there while you dance. So <laughs> it's, such, it's such a weird, it's a weird vibe. I mean, it does fit the name Jumanji. And I will also mention that you can get in here for a thousand yen before 11 p.m. and they give you all you can drink and an all you can eat food option, which it's so weird eating all you can eat food. It's on a buffet table, literally in the club where it's just like hot sweat people dancing everywhere. Uh, they have curry. <laughs> they have like yakisoba noodles. They got like, cake sometimes it's kind of dirty but it is super cheap the music is pretty typical uh the vibe i think kind of sucks because it feels like kind of like college kids who just don't have a lot of money but want to go to the club so they go there but they're not really like into the club so the dancing is just pretty lame so i don't think it's the best club however <laughs> the deal that they give with the thousand yen all you can eat and all you can drink is a pretty good one and also the interior design, just like how ridiculous it is with the alien and Juma, uh, the alien and predator theme. It's actually kind of interesting. I'll say interesting. I won't say cool, but it's at the point where it's interesting enough where I was going to give this place like a D tier, but it does have the all you can drink alcohol, the food, and the interior design is just actually something I kind of would want people to see. So I'm actually going to flip this around. I'm gonna give this place a C tier and move Camelot down to a D tier because of those sticky floors. 
because I'd rather have you guys check out Jumanji if you haven't than Camelot. Next up we have Adam. This is a Japanese club that's a lot more popular I think with like Gyaru, Japanese Gyaru and Japanese men. It's not a terrible club. There's like two or three dance areas but just know if you're a gaijin you might uh, not really be able to talk to people because I don't think they're really interested in that. Usually there, I, I feel like it's a much more Japanese vibe. You'll get guys maybe like talking to you and jumping with you, like wrapping their arms around you to the music. So it's not bad and I remember it's pretty clean from what I remember and the staff is also fairly nice. So uh, I can't really give it more than an A so I'm going to give this a B tier. Next up we have Club Asia and I actually have never been to this place, it's just like really close to Club Adam. So I actually just did want to mention it but from the outside of it, it looks kind of sketchy. But I can't rate it, so I'm just gonna leave it on the side over here. Next up we have Sela V Tokyo, which is a new rooftop club in Shibuya that just opened last December, like 2019. It's owned by the same people that made the Marina Bay Sands. It's very stylish. The outside area is great because actually it's like a rooftop area where you can, you know, sit down, you can dance, you can there's a bar. You can see the whole view of Shibuya from there, because I think it's like on the 14th floor or something. Uh, the vibe is a lot more mature, um, not to say that it's older, but I would say maybe like mid-20s to 30s uh, type people, they go here. And it's definitely got like longer term residents, I think, of Japan who are international. Uh, so they might not speak complete Japanese, but it's, it, it's not like the tourist go crazy vibe. It's more like the, hey, we live here, let's hang out, let's have a good time uh, type of vibe. And I feel like this place is a lot more on like the sexy side. You gotta, you know, dress nicer. The girls dress nicer. People are trying to be a little bit more on the cool side instead of like the let's party and go crazy type of thing. So uh, I actually really like this place. It's got a lot of bilingual people and I feel like people have been waiting for something like this for a long time in Shibuya. So I'm gonna give this place a good old solid S tier. Next up is Harlem. I just want to mention this one because I've never actually been, but a lot of people have been to Harlem. Not New York. In Shibuya, there's a Harlem club. I wanted to at least mention it, but I don't know really where to put it. So I'm just going to leave it off the list, but at least make mention that I know it exists. Uh, moving on, there's another club in Shibuya. This is the last one in Shibuya. It's called Womb. And if you like house music, you might like this place. They mostly play house. I think this place was featured in the Wolverine movie. It's got like a nice vibe, but it's a nice vibe if you like house, which I'm just not a big fan of. It's not my thing, you might like it, but it's low on my list, so I'm gonna give it a C tier. That's it for my tier list, but I did wanna at least talk about an honorable mention, which is the club known as Flower. And if you lived in Tokyo back in 2012, you will remember Flower is the place where the guy was beaten to death by a baseball bat by the Yakuza and the club shut down and has not re- well I think it reopened as a different name but uh, I don't think that one exists anymore either. So basically I just wanted to bring this up because in 2012 there is this time where it became like the true Footloose movie where Japan dug up this old law that said you're not allowed to dance at a nightclub. So it was illegal to dance in a Tokyo nightclub for like two or three months back in 2012. And it, it was like this ridiculous law from post-World War II. I, I really can't remember all the details, but they enforced that law. They had like this one point where they raided a club by having like undercover cops. So they started busting clubs and I kid you not, if you danced even the slightest at a club, the bouncer would come over and be like, hey, hey, stop, you, stop dancing, stop dancing. That kind of changed things for a considerable amount of time, so I did want to mention that. All in all, this is the end of my list. There are a lot more clubs in this, but I think these are like the main ones that most people will end up going to sometime in their career or life in Tokyo. I will also acknowledge that I didn't mention anything about the gay district, which is Shinjuku Nichome. I think there are probably other videos on that, but I don't know if a tier list exists, but if another YouTuber wants to do a tier list for Nichome, go right ahead. I think that would be a great uh, video right there. That's the end of this video, everybody. If you liked the video, make sure to click like, click subscribe, make sure to click other links in my description that you might be interested in. 
uh, other videos I've made. And let me know if you like this video, post a comment, and tell me what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.